Greetings, church. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Michelle here from the Wesley Way United Methodist Church. It is wonderful to be with you together on this fifth, fifth day of April on Palm Sunday. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Greetings to you, and I hope you're having a great uh, Palm Sunday, and it's wonderful to come together this morning. Wanted to give you guys some announcements as we get started in our service today. Uh, first, if you're uh, a Wesley Wayer, it's wonderful to see you, and I hope you enjoy this time of worship today. If you're one of my family members or someone that just found us on YouTube or someone else uh, from connections uh, through our, our various people, we're glad to see you too, and um, welcome. It's wonderful to be with you today. A couple of announcements to bring to your attention, things just to make sure that you're aware of. One, I think everybody from Wesley Way should have uh, gotten the notification that we have a new church bus, a new mini bus. We have been saving money and had a large, generous, anonymous donation to purchase a new church bus. So from the money we had been saving, uh, along with this, this huge gift, we were able to put those two together and purchase a new mini bus. It is parked in front of the church, so you can drive by and check that out. Um, if you're out running errands in the midst of isolation and you're, and you're able to swing by the church, you can, you can do that. I did a video tour for the Facebook people, and I apologize that I don't have that available for you also. I'll try to see if I can't upload that video for you, and it would just be under the same title, Pastor Michelle Preaches, and we'll just call it Minibus. And so you can search by the same title you've been finding these videos to see that video tour of the bus. So we're excited about that. And as soon as we get back together, we're going to be taking uh, test drives in it. Maybe we'll uh, take people down to Scoops for ice cream, drop off a load, go back to the church, get new people, come back, pick up the people with the ice cream, and drop the new batch off, and just have fun rides in the van as we're getting used to the, the minibus. Also wanted to give a big thank you to our trustees. They have been doing some great work at the church, even though everything's closed down right now. A group of them got together last Saturday, and they pressure washed the sidewalks and, and other, other various uh, did some other work on the property uh, that day, and we give thanks for that. Um, our regular mowing crew are back at it, mowing the rec field and the community garden field. And just I uh, wanted to say thank you to those people as they continue to serve our church, even while we're in quarantine. A new announcement that you may not have heard is that our church office is now closed. We had been keeping abbreviated uh, office hours, but we have now closed the office. Um, now the whole state is under a shelter-in-place order, so that, that makes sense. But we made this decision on the 31st of March in response to the bishop's request that all churches and properties remain closed through the end of April. And I inquired if that uh, also includes just minimal church, you know, church hours with some few staff. And they said, yeah, even that, just because it's so easy to pass the coronavirus, y'all. I was reading 25% of the people who um, are infected with the virus have no symptoms. They're asymptomatic. So you feel great, you feel fine, but yet you're going out and, and talking to people, touching people, touching things, and you could be spreading the virus. So even in a small um, office group like ours, it's just better for us to it's safer for everybody to, to not meet. So we are now working from home and you can still reach us through our office email address, my email address, uh, and even our church office line, we are having that routed to our office admin's cell phone. Uh, I believe that's correct. But, it, but even if that didn't work out, you can leave a message. We are checking those messages. So uh, you can stay in touch with us. And of course, we'll still be sending weekly emails and announcements also. Something new we are doing on our church website, which is www.wesleyway.org, O-R-G. We are, we have a, we've created a new tab called uh, Worship Resources, and we're trying to provide uh, ways for you guys to have various resources for Holy Week as we're beginning that today, as we walk into Holy Week, uh, symbolic of Christ's entry into Jerusalem and um, all that took place in his passion and display of great love for us. So this worship resource tab will have devotional readings for the days of the week through, um, through Holy Week uh, and, and some other tips for you to how to celebrate Holy Week at home. 
So check in on that. We'll be, we haven't added anything to it just yet, but there will be some resources there for you. As far as what we're going to do for worship during Holy Week, uh, this is what we're going to kind of do as a church. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of Holy Week, there will be a written devotional for you under that tab, Worship Resources, on our church website. We'll probably also be posting it on our Facebook page, but it will not come out in an email. So if you want that, you'll need to go to our website, click on that tab, and then find the articles. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, for Monday, Thursday, we're not going to have a service, but we will have a, uh, a resource there for you, a, a PDF file that you can open and, and use with your family to celebrate Monday, Thursday together at home. And so that will be available for you for prayer and for reflection and worship for Monday, Thursday. Good Friday, we will have a video for you on this channel, Pastor Michelle Preaches, Good Friday. So that you can watch that there, and we will also be doing our Facebook Live service at 7 p.m. on Good Friday. Saturday, there will be a devotional on the website, and then Sunday morning, we'll have a, just a couple of options. For the YouTube watchers, we'll have another recorded video available to you to watch on Easter morning. For those that are, have Facebook available to them, we will have a 7 a.m. Facebook Live service, just 30 minutes through Facebook, uh, and then we'll have a regular 10 o'clock uh, Facebook Live service as well. So those are the options for Holy Week. I uh, wanted to invite you also to um, to make some Easter eggs. You know, we, we weren't able to do our church Easter egg hunt, and as I've been attending webinars and other resources, one of the resources talked about making your own Easter eggs like this that you might, uh, you know, take some coloring... Um, colored pencils and crayons and markers and the like, and cut out and make your own Easter egg. And then perhaps on the back, then you might write things you're thankful for throughout Holy Week, throughout the season of Easter, since we're going to be uh, out of worship for the whole month of April. You might make a new egg every day. As you color that egg, use that as a time of prayer for those in the church and those in your family and those that you know and for things happening in the news. Uh, and, and record those things on the back, things that you want to pray about, things you're thankful for. And then when we are able to come back into worship, we'll bring in our eggs to church and we'll share those things together. You might also write it on a slip of paper and put it into an actual plastic Easter egg if you have those and store it in the same kind of way. So instead of uh, collecting eggs in an egg hunt in our basket, you'll put these kinds of eggs uh, with rejoicings and thanksgivings in an Easter egg basket and collect those together throughout the whole season. So I hope you'll uh, participate in that because Easter is not just a day, but it is a season in the life of our church. I think this will be a neat way for you to engage with that. And we'll also have some other resources kind of like that idea available to you on our Facebook page. Uh, something else I wanted to, to let you know about that Henry County, our government leaders have uh, invited all of those in Henry County to spend Palm Sunday as a day of prayer and fasting, which I thought was awesome to have that come from our government leaders, and they made it an official decree um, to do so, and you, could, you can research that decree and find it. But they're requesting for Palm Sunday that we spend time praying and fasting over the, the matter of coronavirus and prayers for our county and for our state, for our neighbors, for our friends and family, for the whole world as we battle against this virus. So you may have already had breakfast today by this point of the video. That's okay, but you could still partake in the fast by skipping lunch and skipping dinner. And for some people, that might be more suitable. For some of you, you might not be able to skip a meal because of dietary reasons, health reasons, and that's okay too. You, you can still participate in the fast and in the prayer, maybe, maybe in other ways. Perhaps you abstain from all TV viewing for the rest of the day. Perhaps you give up uh, sodas for the rest of the day. And so uh, I just invite you to be part of that fasting that we're doing here in Henry County. The last thing I wanted to give you as a worship reminder is that on Easter Sunday, even through our video, we are going to participate together in Holy Communion. It's a, I heard the bishop describe it this way called um, uh, Times Extremis. In extreme circumstances, under extreme conditions, that we can do things differently as a church. Normally we would be together for Holy Communion, but this is the way we are being together. So we're going to participate in that on next Sunday, Easter Sunday. So I will have communion set up here for the video, 
and then you guys will have it set up in your home and we'll participate in the liturgy together and then uh, you will partake with your family or with yourself there at home and we'll participate with that here uh, in my home as in the video and we'll do the same thing in our Facebook live service ideas and, and recommendations for preparation for Holy Communion there in your home will be on our website under that worship resource tab. We'll have a, a document that's been, pre been prepared by one of our Methodist churches that has regular, regular online worship already. And so they had prepared sort of a guide for people at home that would be watching. And we're going to modify that and use that for ourselves as well. So that's an exciting thing to look forward to for Easter Sunday that we're going to take communion together. So I hope you'll uh, be sure to go to that website, www.wesleyway.org read that document and, and be able to set up um, some Holy Communion that we might participate in that together next week. Whew, you made it through all the announcements. All right, let's, let's begin with our worship. Let's have some prayer together. Oh, most holy God, we give thanks that you do save us. That word Hosanna, God, means save us. And we cry out to you, Lord Christ, save us. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our sins. Come and redeem us. Make us holy. Lord, save us from the coronavirus. Save us from... Um, our sinful nature. Lord, come and save us. Thank you, Lord Christ, that you have done that work already, that you, were, you have already given your life on behalf of us and have redeemed us, restored us, and we are yours. Uh, Lord, thank you that you are working in this world. Even though we may not see it, you are at work, and we uh, put our hope and our trust in you. Lead us in our time and worship this day, God. May you be glorified in and through us. In Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from Philippians, <coughs> Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 11. Actually, I, I apologize, that's uh, incorrect. It's from 5, verse 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. May God add to the reading and the hearing of his word. All right, so now I'd like to share with you in the Apostles' Creed uh, Apostles' Creed is one of our statement of, statements of faith in the, in the church, in the church universal, not just in the Methodist church. This is the one that, that we come to the most commonly in the Methodist church. But this is something that uh, we all embrace as Christians, our, our statement of faith, our belief. Um, this is who, who we say we are and how we identify ourselves and what we profess in faith. So let's uh, join in that together. If you have a hymn book, a Methodist hymn book, it's found on page 881. If you have a computer nearby, you can Google that and pull up the Apostles' Creed on your internet um, and, and read it that way also. After the Apostles' Creed, we're going to sing the Gloria Patri. And uh, forgive me, we're going to sing it as we do it Wesley Way. So if it's unfamiliar, a different variety for you, I hope you'll just go with the flow. <laughs> All right, let's have the Apostles' Creed here together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen, 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 amen. 
Well, let's sing now together. If you have, again, a Methodist hymn book, the song is on page 278 in the Methodist hymn book. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing. Through pillar, court, and temple, the lovely anthem ring. To Jesus, who had blessed them, folded closely to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest. Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of Heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice. Now we come to our time to share in our joys and concerns together and to lift up uh, in our time of prayer. We had several names that had been given to us from people from the church. These were names that were listed in our Facebook Live last week. People had sent emails this week, and I've checked in with some of our church members and um, gotten some information on those people. So prayers for Brenda Swint, um, for uh, Kelly Brown, Kelly Brown battles with cancer. Prayers for these three individuals that have been uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Larry Michalich, Jan Cook, and then we're still waiting to hear back from David Boss if he is uh, negative or positive for the coronavirus. Prayers also for these three individuals' families uh, as they've passed away here in this last week. Prayers for Reverend James Veach, Randy Carmichael, and Vicki Stone for those three families. Uh, we um, heard from uh, Reverend James Veach, was given to us by Russ Waldman, a, a pastor mentor that he had known uh, back um, up north. And uh, Randy Carmichael was a member in, in uh, Russ and Karen Waldman's uh, subdivision community, and he passed away, And I, I, if I remember correctly, from COVID-19 complications. Vicki Stone had been battling with cancer and had gotten a clear bill of health, and then it, and then it came back aggressively, and, and she passed away from that. Prayers also for Pat Speaks and Mac Baldwin. They continue to undergo treatment for the cancer that they have. Uh, uh, saw Mac and Yvonne this week, and it was a delight. They came by the church to bring, bring some items and got to just chat with them at a distance <laughs> while they were in their car, and they both look well. Uh, Mac said he's tired, but uh, doing well, and continues with... Uh, I think he has treatments twice a week is, is his regiment. And they said thank you so much for all the calls, the cards, um, all the, the kindness of the church. Uh, same thing was mentioned by Pat Speaks. She said, oh my goodness, it's wonderful. Every day there's more cards that come from the mailbox from people from the church praying and, and showing kindness to her. Uh, Pat will have three more rounds of chemo. She's done three so far. She's got three more. And then, uh, then they will do another... Um, 
exam where they'll determine on if, if they're ready to do surgery. But she's had some blood transfusions and some uh, potassium infusions and has uh, just really kind of worn out also from the going and the coming to the doctors and, and undergoing all the treatments, but is hanging in there and battling onward. So let's lift those uh, precious dear souls up to the Lord. I also want to certainly uh, keep uh, the first responders in our prayers. Uh, we were able to, oh, this was a great thing, uh, you guys. We were able to donate not, uh, eight of our, we had some N95 masks at the church, left over from the last time we did uh, cleaning buckets with UMCOR. And I just was holding on to those until the next go-round. And I didn't even think about it until I heard the, the donation the annual conference was able to make about 2,500 masks that they pulled from uh, cleaning buckets that we had in our warehouse here in the North Georgia conference and were able to donate those locally. And I went, oh my gosh, we've got some at church. So we gave five of those out locally to the McDonough Fire Department. Uh, Then uh, Ken and Debbie Harkness also uh, found that they had some and they donated those to the uh, McDonough Fire Department uh, or, or excuse me, the one in Kellytown near, I think, where they live. And then we were able to give uh, two to healthcare uh, professionals that our church is connected through, uh, family members from our church. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's the ones we've been able to donate. So I was really excited about that. But prayers for these individuals there, they don't have access to the masks that they need. Hospitals are discouraging them from wearing masks because they don't want patients to feel like they're not healthy and well. Um, and so when you see someone with a mask, it makes you nervous about how what the state of, of that person's health is. So they've been discouraging the use of masks. And that's what these individuals have been t- telling me. And um, that's just, it's not good. So there's just great concern for that. So let's pray for a change in the tides there. I also wanted to give a praise to Pat Glonert. Uh, Pat has been working on making homemade masks and she uh, equipped a lot of the Ramblers uh, with homemade masks. And, um, and others have been doing that too from the church. I know um, Sherry Catafias, I think, has been leading some folks in that too. So just, you guys are serving in so many different ways with one another. I just, I lift up that to the, I just give thanks for that. And we praise God for that. Good is happening. There are good things that are happening all around us. Uh, a couple of uh, movie stars, they have been um, making it their, their business to communicate to others what good things are happening and they're making little broadcast news kind of show and and sharing some of those stories and so look look for the good that's what um, Mr. Rogers said right look for the good look for the people who are doing good there's good happening all around us Uh, lots of lots of pain lots of concern but uh, God is with us doing good things and 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 he's working in us so hang in there and uh, let's keep that in mind so prayers for first responders people that work in our hospitals and clinics and medical practices of various kinds. Um, Prayers for our military men and women, especially these on the um, Air Force carriers and people that are separated from their families and they don't have all the resources they need either. And it's just, it's a mess, y'all. We're we're in a mess, but we're all in this together and we are going to get through this together. And so we bring these things to the Lord. So let's, let's go again to the Lord in our prayers. Most holy God, we just take a moment now to be still before you, to lift our our prayers before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, you've heard the names of these loved ones that we have called out today, those uh, families who have lost loved ones, those who are sick and battling with illness, Lord, there are people who are battling with depression even more so than they were before. People who are in uh, marriages that have been falling apart and yet um, still even more so in the midst of what's happening right now. There are people in situations of domestic violence where maybe going to work was a way to get away from things. Going to school was a way to to have a respite and and things maybe even worse there than what they were before. Um, emotions heightened even worse. There are people who rely upon nonprofit groups that may not be able to, to help and serve like they have been. People out of work, not able to get the income they need for their family. People who are sick, people who are afraid, people who are anxious. Uh, oh, Christ, come and help us. Lord, you are the one who saves. We resound with those that Palm Sunday as you made your triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Hosanna, save us. Save us, oh God. 
Come and meet us right where we are. Meet us in our situation. Meet us in our circumstances uh, that we would see your victory reign true in us and in all of these things that are in our hearts and our minds this day. Uh, Lord, for every matter and every situation that we have mentioned, that you would come and move and do as you do best. Restore, redeem, uh, fix and repair. Uh, we, we give thanks. And Lord, now we pray the prayer that you have taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, we would also normally have an offering, and I wanted to just share with you about ways to donate. I think I've been doing this all along. I'm so thankful to you guys about how you have given to support the church. Uh, we did, uh, I wrote it down... Uh, we did receive what we needed to pay all of our bills in March. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we've had people bringing checks to the church and mailing things in and people using our online services that have never used it before. And um, just so thankful. Uh, we had just, just beyond our expenses at 48605 given in tithes. Um, our expenses were somewhere around 48300 something. I, I apologize. I don't have it written down. It's been in the weekly email. You can go and, and check that, I believe, there. But um, just was so thankful for this. Uh, we had tithes come in of about 42,000 and change. And then we had some other uh, kinds of monetary gifts that were given to us and, and all together um, really just worked out great. And so I appreciate that. Appreciate the ways you guys are supporting us. We do have, um, I'll give you this. This is a way, ways you can help and give to the church. So if you've never given to Vanco, uh, this is one way that you can give. You go to our church website address and you look for the donate button, which may be under another, t it should, 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 be, um, should be right there, um, easily accessible. And then you're gonna click the button that says give now on that page. If you're uncomfortable with online giving and that you just, eh, just you're really concerned about that, Vanco has been giving us this offer where we can use the, their phone number and you can call them and they will take your, your gift over the phone. And, and you can give that way. So we're just uh, thankful for that. So this is a great way that you can still give and help support the church. Uh, we won't be able to, uh, uh, right, so, sorry. You'll need to give them the church name and our zip code when you make that donation by phone. We have not been able to, uh, you've, sorry, you've been able to come and give your donation at the church and you won't really be able to do that now. You might be able to come by and slip it between the cracks in the doors and push it on through, but uh, it's probably just best to mail it to our church P.O. PO box number, which is 2890, uh, and the not McDonough address, 30253. Uh, you can mail it uh, at that address. I truly hope that is our P.O. box number. Um, do confirm that maybe with the church office if you've never <laughs> mailed to us before. That's what's off the top of my head, but I did not write that information down. So maybe follow up before you mail it into our P.O. box number. Oh, bless it. All right. So thank you. Thank you for the ways you're giving to support the church. All right. Uh, our scripture text for this, this day because you may be watching this in the morning, you may be watching this in the afternoon, uh, it could be in the dark of night, uh, but uh, this is our text for here and now. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I didn't know that when you stream or record, you have to have different kinds of uh, licensing. So uh, NRSV is given permission for the text to be used uh, in the midst of this, this time of pandemic. So hats off to the, the owners of the NRSV. Okay, Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord Christ, we thank you for your word that you've given to us, that we can know who you are and who we are as your people. Lord, any time that we should encounter it, we ask that you might reveal it to us, um, that you'd help us to understand it and know what it means, uh, that we could apply it to our lives. Give us wisdom, give us guidance, give us courage. In Christ we ask. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about different ways that you move about by foot. and lots of different ways that we can transport ourselves uh, mechanically, as it were, you know, bicycle and car and trains and planes and automobiles of all, all kind and magnitude, roller skates and uh, scooters and the like. But by foot, you might think, oh, well, you would walk by foot. But there's a lot of different ways that you can travel by foot. Uh, as you're walking with your feet, you might run, you might jog, you might skip, you might mosey, you might swagger, you might crawl, you might creep, you might drag along. There's all these different methods of how you can travel by foot. But what does it look like when someone moves with purpose? When someone has purposeful steps? That's our sermon title today, Purposeful Steps. Jesus moves with purposeful steps. Someone who, who has purpose in their walk, there's something about their body language, right, that's just different. They look focused. Uh, maybe their face looks focused. They're intent about whatever they're on. They're not easily distracted by the things that are happening and going on about them. They are determined and they are zeroed in at the mission at hand. You may look like that when you go to the grocery store when you're shopping. You're like, I just I don't need all these other things. I need these few things on my list. I'm getting it. I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. Especially in these times, we're maybe more focused than ever in the store, realizing we just need to get what we need and then get back home and, and be back uh, in isolation. Focused, purposeful steps. Christ makes his way into Jerusalem with very purposeful steps. Very, um, he has a, he's a mission. He's got a purpose and an agenda that he's about, and he makes his way there. I was just pondering that, the, the difficulty of, of what was put before Christ. And if, and if I had been him, I'm not the son of God. So I would have done things differently. But uh, I, I'm a bit of a procrastinator. I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a large procrastinator even. Uh, if you talk to people that I work with at the church office, they could confirm that. I had roommates from college that gave me a magnet that is, is in my office that says, I procrastinate, therefore I cram. Uh, I might want to put it off a little bit. If it's something that's unenjoyable, you may not want to get right to it. Some people do. They get right on top of that and they're done with it and they move on. Sometimes if it's a difficult thing, we delay it as long as we can. And I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not so sure how I would have responded. Maybe I would have said, you know, we don't have to be in Jerusalem just yet. Let's, let's go back to Nazareth and, and there's some more people there that we need to share the good news with. And let, we'll come back to Jerusalem for Passover. We'll, we'll be here, but we don't have to be here yet. Let's get out of town a little bit, or let's go. Let's go back to Bethany. Let's go back and see Lazarus and Martha and Mary. We don't. We just don't get enough time with them. Let's let's get some time together with them. Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't do that. You might think of uh, a difficult conversation you have to have, and again, how we kind of put those things off, or we just dread them. Maybe breaking up with someone you've been dating that you have to call it off, and it's just, it's going to be awkward. There may be tears, there may be anger. It's just going to be hard, and you don't look forward to it. Or maybe a job that you dislike, or perhaps a job that 
you you think you would you think god you don't have that job you know everybody has that like some people you you would just crush their soul to put them into an office where they worked behind a desk eight hours a day other people if you put them in with animals and out in nature they would not it would not be the right environment for them working with kids working with aging adults teaching, being a writer, being a politician. I mean, just fill in the blanks, whatever it is. Everyone has a job that they go, I would never, ever in a thousand years do that. You couldn't pay me enough to do that job. So if you could think about that task and what that might be like for you, then imagine going, filling out the job application and showing up for work at this thing you hate and detest that you'd rather do anything else. That's sort of how I understand Palm Sunday. This is what Christ has done for us. Not to say that he didn't um, take upon himself that suffering with joy for the opportunity to serve us, to, to show love to us, because he absolutely did. He absolutely was willing to, to undergo everything he did because of his great love for us. So I don't mean to slight that at all, but that's how I understand Palm, Palm Sunday. That's what I think about it, that with great purpose and intention, Jesus made his way into Jerusalem, knowing that he would suffer, knowing he was going to be crucified, knowing his dearest, closest companions would betray him and, um, and abandon him and, and desert him. What a hard thing to walk into. Sure, Palm Sunday is filled with joy and praises and Hosanna loud Hosannas and palms are being waved. I meant to show you guys my palm palms. We uh, talked about these on our Facebook page at the church that we could, didn't have palms to, to wave, uh, but we could create palms. And so I just took and cut my, you know, drew my hand on a piece of paper and colored it in and glued it, and I meant to wave this while we were doing something that I didn't have to use the guitar for, and I forgot about it. But so the people are waving their palms, shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, and that had to be a boost, you know, for Jesus to um, be part of that kind of parade. A bit of, a bit of uh, energy and encouragement as he goes into this very dark, difficult task. But he does it with intention. He does it without hesitation, without procrastination. He has purposeful steps that he makes to Calvary for you and for me. For you, for me, for all of the world. He gave himself. This shows us the tremendous love of our God. How awesome is he that he would do this for us? Just a couple weeks ago, we talked about Romans chapter 5, and we looked at the great love of God for us, that, that as Paul calls us, enemies of God, that, that in that state, being God's enemy, he gave himself for us. And Romans 5, 8 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's just tremendous. The love of God for you is so great. I, I pray that you would know that. I pray that you would realize how much God loves you. That he would go and do this, not just something that is difficult or um, unenjoyable for eight hours a day like these jobs I was talking about. But he endured the greatest loss of all, his life. Christ sacrificed his life for us and he did it with, with purpose and intent. It wasn't like he was caught off guard. Oh, oh, I'm in Jerusalem. Oh, these people are out to get me. Oh, what's happening? He knew what was going to happen. That was why he came. He came that he would live and walk amongst us and heal and touch and change lives, but then go to Calvary and die for you and for me to, to take upon our sins upon himself and to give himself up for us. How awesome, how awesome is our Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. The other thing that we can we we take from this passage also is is that Christ calls us to follow his example. He calls us to live a life of sacrifice and humility and service to the purposes of God. Our passage in Philippians sort of addresses this. It, it speaks to that same concept that that Christ didn't consider the fact that he is the son of God as something to, something to be uh, exploited, as the NRSV, see, uh, NRSV says, exploited. He didn't use that to his advantage to have places of honor and um, glory. He humbled himself 
taking the form of a slave. Not taking the place of a low-scale politician or taking the place of a local merchant. He took the place of a slave, lowest of all. Emptied himself of, of all of this, uh, his God nature and took on this human form. Humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so he calls us to follow in that example that we would humble ourselves before God, that we would yield ourselves before him, that we would put God's will above our own will and our own nature. That's a hard thing to do. Are we willing to suffer for the kingdom of God as Christ suffered for the kingdom of God? Are we willing to put our lives, our families, our jobs, our time on the line as Christ did? Do we live our lives with purposeful steps? Or do we just kind of go through our days without much thought or intention? Christ knew what his purpose was, and he set his mind upon that. He made his way to Calvary, and he did not turn back. He prayed with intensity, and he asked God, if there could be a plan B, I would be on board for that. Please, yes. But when the prayer came back that this is my will, Jesus followed with that in obedience. And he calls us to do the same. What are the things that God has been calling you to do that you haven't been doing? Maybe God has been speaking to you for a good while about his will and his plan for you, but you have been ignoring him. You've been denying that you have that gift, skill, or talent, and that there's no way that anyone would want you to do that thing or listen to what you have to say. And, and oh my gosh, if you did that thing, that would affect your family and it would affect your income. And, and you might have to move to a new place. And uh, what if people rejected you? What if people cast you out? What if you lost friends? All these excuses that we make. Even with just more, even on a maybe more basic level, even in our sinfulness, where we allow the things we want to get us off the path of what God wants for us. Christ humbled himself even to death on a cross, and he calls us to have purposeful steps to see what God's plan is for us and to step out and follow that in faithfulness. You have a purpose. So, so live out the purpose that God has for you, which, you know, Micah 6, 8 says, what does the Lord require of you except that you act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? And that's a basic plan for everybody. But there are specific things that God wants us to do, conversation He wants us to have, people He wants us to interact with, nonprofits that are to be started, uh, sermons to be preached, and, and on and on, and good works to be done. And are we walking with purpose in the plan that God has for us? Christ, Christ did that, and he did that because of his great love for us. So know that today, that God loves you so intensely that he would give himself, Christ gave himself for you. You are loved, friend, and I pray that you can know the love of Christ and that you would receive that, receive his love and his forgiveness, and be reconciled to God today. For those of us who already have done that, I pray that you would have courage down in the core of who you are, to live your life with purpose according to the plan of God, of what He has for you, that He would give you clarity and wisdom to know what that is, and that you could follow with great purpose and intention about the will of God. Even in this time right now where we seem more dormant as we are sheltering at home and, and so forth, there's still purpose even in the midst of that, which it it's hard to see that. I, I get that because I feel that way too. It's hard that you can't plan anything. It's hard to do anything. But there are phone calls to be had, video meetings to be had with people, cards that you can send, prayers that you can lift in this time here. There's work still to be done, friends. So I pray this day you would know the love of God, know His intent purpose to walk to Calvary on your behalf, and that you would be able to follow after Him, um, even to the point of suffering, that God's kingdom might prevail. Let's pray. Lord Christ, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for your purposeful steps to Calvary. As you walked into Jerusalem, people said, save us. And you said, I will, I am, I'm going to, it is happening. Thank you, God, for that. 
Oh, Lord, redeem us, restore us, renew us in you. May we not take for granted your great sacrifice, but that we would receive it as the tremendous gift it is and that it would change everything about our lives. Move in us this day, O oh God. We ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So go in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be light, be salt. Share Christ with all you know and meet and live your life with purpose. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. All right, friends, y'all stay safe and we'll see you soon. Take care.